Greetings, Huns Nation. Billy O here, coming to you from Palm Desert, California, where a lot of old people live. This is the Huns Old Cast, Season 2, Episode 4, for May 18th, 2021. Let's talk about the last two weeks for our beloved Austin Huns. I got to tell you, the Huns lately have been more dangerous than a bunch of drunken longshoremen. And our sh future is so bright, I got to wear shades, man. It's just all there is to it. May 8th at Nixon Lane was Old Timers Day. Uh, we played the Reds, uh, trying to avenge a couple of earlier season losses for D1, D2, and we successfully did that. D2 ran the Reds off the field 64 to 17. Uh, D1 beat the Reds in a very physical match. 35-26, and the Reds had a late score after the game was decided that it made it seem closer than it really was. It was 35-19 uh, to 19 up to that point, and the Huns really handled the Reds on the day. Um, after the match, Johnny Heron, the Reds' captain, told Coach Adam that the Huns are the most physical team in Texas. Guys, I got to tell you, we've been known as being a finesse team uh, for pretty much my entire life with the Huns. Maybe in D2, we were, we were more physical than a lot of other teams. But to be told by the captain of the Reds, a very physical team, that we're the most physical team in Texas is a hell of an accomplishment. Good on you guys. There was also great fun that day held, had by the old boys. Uh, two fun wins to watch. Great barbecue by Mark Trudy Roberts and by Artie Acuna. Thanks, guys. I'm told that uh, Mark Roberts' wife helped too. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, probably some libations were involved out there and some old tall tales. A um, little bit of fundraising if we were lucky. Maybe we sold some merchandise. But the more, most important thing is to get the old boys together once a year and to celebrate them and celebrate the club. Hats off to the Huns Hall of Fame Committee that did another great job putting this together. That's Jack Bloom, Carl Dahlberg, Brent Zippy Zapoy, Joe Bailey, TJ Costello, and Brent Captain Poot Graf. I missed you guys. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I'm glad you guys had a great fucking time. Way to go, Huns, avenging ourselves uh, against the Reds. And also, this is a year of home and away series. There's no table. So we ended up taking both series, the D1 by a bonus point and by point differential, the D2 by point differential. Way to go, guys. May 15th, the Huns versus the Blacks at Burr. This is a rematch of earlier in the year. Um, but before we get to that, I just want to say the old boys had a run out first thing at noon. Uh, though the match didn't go our way, it's always great to get the old boys out there. I'm, I'm told that uh, we had a couple of really old boys out there. Johnny Banks played. He's older than me, so he's got to be 65, 66, maybe even 67. Uh, and I'm told Chris Bouguet did an interesting job as the ref. So good on us for getting a lot of old boys out there. A second thing I want to say is that this episode of the Old Cast is brought to you by our friends at 512 Solar. Call JP Novak for all your 512 home solar needs. JP has been a sponsor of the club for many years and still a D1 player at like 40 years old. Guys, amazing. Thanks, JP. So before I get into the games themselves, foreshadowing on December 25th, 2020, in the Huns Old Cast Episode 3, I mentioned the Argentina recent victory over the All Blacks is a good omen for the Huns. Argentina had never beaten the All Blacks, but they've consistently been developing their talent, improving their game. And I said that if we played our perfect game and continued to grow our game, we could use this as a, as a model for how to beat the Blacks. And we did. <laughs> Secondly, I'm told that during film study on Friday before the match, Phil reminded everybody 
that just three short years ago, the players were in that room voting to appeal relegation. And now we had a chance three years later, it's a very short period of time to sweep the blacks and the Huns have. Not bad, Adam, huh? For a bunch of D2 players and coaches. So let's get down to the matches themselves. Uh, D2, wearing their 5-1-2 solar jerseys, ran the blacks right off the field, just like they did the reds. I saw the final score was 63 or 64 to 12. I've heard 67 to 12. I don't know. It was a lot to not that much. And, you know, by the end of the match, it looked like the Blacks had no answers. They were the ones dropping the ball. They were the ones fumbling the ball out of bounds. They were the ones laying flat on their faces in the mud. And there were so many great runs, so many great offloads. It was just an incredible effort. It was like a track meet. It's like we were playing with 20 guys. For me, the man of the match was Preston Rain. Coach Adam didn't argue. My thought process was he had two great tries, one of them a 70-yard run down the left sideline where he broke a tackle and juked another. He had a sweet little popover kick in the first half that bounced back to him, and he ran for another 20 meters. Plenty of solid tackles, and a lot of them on really big guys. This, Preston's a good form tackler, and he hung in there really good. Honorable mentions per Coach Adam, he put in uh, Peter Warsnop um, coming in as Mr. Instant Offense. You know, honorable mention or not, I thought it was great to see Mateo Garcia play. Always fun to watch him play, coming in and kicking for posts and just moving the ball around and kicking for field position very well. My personal favorite uh, on the day, though, happened to be Shane Pearson on the sidelines. So I'm going to give him a fan of the match. Uh, award. Uh, my wife and I were watching on the living room TV. By the way, thanks to all the guys that do Huns TV. On this day, Heller had the high def camera so I could plug it into my TV and listen to Heller and Jordan and Wheezy and Shane uh, talk about the game. And Shane was just going, let's fucking go, go, silence the crowd, fucking go. My wife's like, what is that? Who is that guy? And he said, ah, it's just Shane. So way to go, Shane. You get the Hun Spirit Award um, on the day. And thanks to all the guys all year long that do Hun TV. The out of towners, even guys in other countries like Brazil or England or Australia, uh, we really enjoy being able to tune in and, and keep up with you guys. Next, the D1 played, and you know what, guys? We beat 16 guys, 16 men on that day. The Blacks fielded a much stronger side, and I don't know what was going through the ref's head, but we, we beat 16 men on the day. Um, the Blacks scored a converted try after the Hooter. You know, it really made the, the game look closer than it was, ending up at 26 to 24, but we never trailed. Uh, we controlled the action and the field position, in my opinion, throughout. Except for a couple mixed missed tackles here and there that led to a couple of long blacks runs, I really thought we dominated the day. And without that last try uh, uh, by the blacks in garbage time, we each scored three tries and our kick had made the difference. You know, watching this game, it occurred to me that Throughout our history, this is a game that we would have normally had trouble winning and, and that we would have struggled to win because it was physical. Um, it was in the rain. It was against the Blacks at Burr. It required patience and discipline and strategy, and we're really known for our loose play. Um, and the ref's calls were going against us. Jody Reyes, I just got to say, you were not held. That clear out was fine. I would have loved to see how both of those plays um, worked out. You really came in and added a lot of power and energy. You got screwed on those two calls. Coach Adam thought there were a lot of other bad calls, but those are the two that came to mind uh, for me. Uh, and the other thing that typically we didn't do nearly as well as we did today was kick for field position and kick for post. 
Alex got us out of our end and the ball into touch very well. Um, we were really good. I will also say sidebar under the high ball all day long in the wet. And Alex had two huge kicks for posts that were just Herculean, uh, both 40 plus meters, one from center, one from a 45 degree angle. It ended up being the difference in the game. Um, we did all of these things that a seasoned veteran rugby club does. We weren't just better athletes. We were the better, higher IQ rugby club on the day. We were more physical. We were tougher. We did everything. And, you know, you guys ground out a huge, tough, physical, smart win. Congratulations. Some key points that, that I observed and I've heard other old boys talking about, and I ran by Adam and he agreed. Uh, great leadership by Captain Biff. Uh, he was scheduled to be the vice captain on the day. He ended up being the full captain, Alan told me. And Biff led well. Um, I've really noticed a lot of continued growth over the years in Biff's game. And all the way around, this was probably on the field, Biff's finest moment as a hunt, man. Way to go. Solid defense. Uh, only a couple of broken tackles or letdowns, but man, solid defense. The back line comes up quick. The scrum tackled well. Um, really, really good goal line defense, you guys. Wow. Outstanding scrum and back play. As far as the scrums, you know, we don't get pushed around at all by the Reds and the Blacks anymore. Zero. Um, Phil, phenomenal. Matt Mitchell, great to see you propping at D1. We got some new guys helping in and subs here too. Great team effort in the tight five and in the scrums. The lineouts are similarly phenomenal. You know, this is a huge improvement year over year too. Um, Zach and JP have always been solid, but man, Biff has become a monster in the lineout and getting the ball to the scrum half very, very quickly. The tempo out of the lineouts is really good. Our loose play, uh, in the scrum, very solid, strong runs um, before we earn our right to go outside. Um, really incredible pick and goes around the goal line. Um, and man, that goal line try, this, this seems to happen every game, more than once sometimes, where you guys just take four or five minutes and you grind it out. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Really fun to watch, super patient. This isn't something that we used to really do in the past. Well, at least as nearly as we're doing now. And it's phenomenal to watch, man. It's unstoppable, it seems. And you guys really deserve a lot of credit. Uh, the back play too, quick defense. Um, there was a try movement also in the second half from a scrum on the right sideline where, you know, Corey came up into the back line. We worked it through the hands and Nick, uh, scored in the corner. Uh, this is what good rugby clubs do, man, on a wet day. And, you know, you guys are to be commended for that. Back seemed really cohesive to me, both on offense and defense. And you guys were really good under the high balls. We won the high ball game. And on a wet day, that was very impressive. Big kudos to Alex Reese. You know, he made me buy him a new kicking tee from New Zealand a couple of years ago. And for a while he was having trouble, told he had a, a, a sore foot, but man, whatever was going on then, he's worked it out now. Lights out kicking, uh, but not just for posts. His positional kicking was incredible. He kept the blacks pinned in their end. He got us out of our end, found touch when he needed to. And those two kicks were huge. I, I for post, I told Coach Adam that I cannot really recall a better Huns positional kicking and kicking for post match combined on a wet day, particularly under pressure from a Huns fly half in Huns history. I know some people will argue uh, the 2017. A season. So what? I'm sticking by my guns and saying this was one of the great, if not the greatest, Huns fly half kicking performances ever. Wow. Especially at Burr on a rainy day, man. Incredible. So my man of the match is um, Alex Reese. I think he deserved it. I'm told the Blacks thought so too. 
but I hope he got nicked by <clears throat> Captain Biff and Kangaroo Cart Court because he turns right around and loses the boat race. When did the Huns ever lose a boat race to the Blacks? And I got to tell you, for certain, John D. Reese, his father, never would have let that happen. Biff, I hope you, I hope you got a couple of bucks out of him in Kangaroo Court. Honorable mention is a strong performance from Phil. Great runs, incredible scrum play, solid defense, great work around the goal line on offense, quiet leadership from Kankles. I call him the Huns Iron Man, but those guys out there call him Kankles and a, and a bunch of other nicknames. So many tackles. Just Jesus Christ, man, great job. My personal honorable mentions are Sean LeMasters for the greatest uh, mullet in, in Hun's history. You can see him right behind me here on the, on the back screen, just right by my right ear. Uh, I'm really jealous of that mullet, man. It's a thing of beauty. And Jody, your mop is beautiful too, man. I got to tell you, I am jealous of both of you guys here. Yeah, you had great games, but your hairdos are what got you over the top. Honorable mentions to these guys as well. Bonus, the Valks went three and zero on the day uh, at a tournament at Burfield. So that means Wheezy and Nixon Lane are five and zero on the day. Congratulations to everybody. But Wheezy, I got to ask you, what's up with that um, carpenter's pencil uh, jammed under your hat on game day? Inquiring minds want to know. And also, just a quick shout out to Hansel and a bunch of other volunteers. If all of this wasn't enough, the Huns hosted a high school uh, rugby tournament over at Nixon Lane on the day. I'm told we parked something like 300 cars. Big event, might have made a little money, but just as important, we're uh, promoting rugby at all levels, all over, all over uh, Texas. Well done to the Austin Huns Rugby Club. So far for the year, D1 is four and two, and we took the series, we swept the Blacks, we took the series on uh, bonus points and uh, point differential from both the Reds and Rugby HTX. Uh, D2 is four and three. I count that Quinn's game as a D2 match because we promised him we'd bring him a D2 and D3 side. Uh, they fielded their D1 side, but that's okay. They're rebuilding and it's fine. Um, but Guys, for a COVID year where we didn't even know we were going to be playing rugby and for an abbreviated schedule, you know, we're basically at the top of a mythological uh, TRU table. Uh, we played two great matches against the Reds who have really rebounded strong from uh, last year where we beat them all three times. Um, we've only swept the Blacks once in our history. That was in 2017. Guys, the eight years I played, we only beat the Blacks twice. Both of those were in the 70s when we were still a D1 team. So it doesn't happen very often. So it doesn't happen in the same year very often. I can't tell you another club that has swept the Blacks two games in one year. Uh, I don't know that it exists, at least not back from when the Quins uh, played and from our 2017 season. So good on you. And I'm telling you, uh, COVID rebound season or not this means a lot and the blacks are walking around with a bad taste in their mouth right now now hats off to them i mean no ill will they're a great club they'll certainly be back they've dominated texas for a long time but for right now today the huns are the best d1 team in texas congratulations lads now here's some things that the old boys are talking about in our email streams and in our ch chats about the Huns. And I ran them all by Adam and he agrees. Here's some things we've noticed year over year. Lots of young new faces. So recruiting is paying off. Much better team speed. Um, and we're recycling the ball much faster out of the breakdown. So our pace of play is much quicker, often much quicker than the other teams. We're far more physical, as Johnny Heron said, and he knows more about this these days than I do, and he's a big physical player. He claims the Huns are the most physical team in Texas. That's incredible. So we're no longer a finesse team. We can out-finesse them, and we can out-bang them. Better on defense. 
you know, defense wins games. Better scrum play all the way around. Scrum downs, line outs, and defense and goal line offense. Those pick and goes are just impressive. It's like running the ball up the middle of American football, and they're knowing you're going to do it, and they can't stop it. That just demoralizes a team. It's incredible to watch. Um, scrums win games, backs decide by how much. And our backline play is much more consistent and creative. You know, I really give credit to Alex and Corey on this. Those two guys settle down a bunch of young guns that can run like the wind. And, you know, it's really fun to watch us outsmart them in the back line. You know, when I played, it was try to get the ball to the wing. Um, you guys are just doing a great job. It's fun. It's fun to watch you. So, you know, you practice, you play like you practice. All this stuff isn't happening by accident. Um, hats off to all coaches and to all players. You know, Gallus went to a practice this last week and told me he was really impressed by how structured, how smart, how disciplined, how tight the drills were, that, that the coaches and the players were getting every minute out of the two hours they could, and that it was really impressive to watch. And, man, it's paying off on the field. You know, leadership matters um, as, as – uh, Phil told the team at the video session three short years ago, uh, the players voted to appeal relegation and stay in D1. Um, there were four guys that are still on the D1 squad that were in that meeting, all scrummies, Phil, Biff, Zach, JP. So these guys have carried that leadership through every practice on the field, um, and have led by example and have seen it through. And now we've swept the blacks and we're where we are. You know, we need to keep building on it, but great job guys. The entire coaching staff, Adam, Brian, Brian voted as a player to appeal D1 relegation too, but he's since retired and he's a coach now. Jack Bloom, Ryan and Andrew, you know, you guys, you play like you practice, you show up, you get it done. You help these guys bring that vision to life. This is a player's game, but coaches make a difference. Well done, gentlemen. Well done, gentlemen. Um, off the field, Matt Mitchell, our chairman, Hansel, our um, associate director of rugby, and uh, Wheezy, our director of rugby. You know, leadership off the field matters too. We've built some funds. Uh, we've become very organized, trying to give coaches and the players the tools they need to succeed and help with recruiting. And it's really all come together. The old boys have made a big difference, too. You know, we got a couple hundred guys, a couple hundred members working and pulling together to make all this happen. And, you know, we did it together. Community, culture, rugby. Uh, after 2017, we decided to rebuild the club from the ground up and do it the right way, the Huns way, built around those three principles and around brotherhood. And I don't know how you can argue with what's happening. Incredible. Um, you know, there are no asterisks this year. None. Uh, a couple of extra thank yous. I want to uh, give a shout out to Carl Dahlberg for taking over the Old Boys Network and doing a great job with it. I want to give a shout out to uh, Mitch Pryor uh, for hanging with the club. Uh, tough year a few years ago as club president. He's been running youth rugby this year. Hansel's been very involved there too. Great job. Uh, Mitch also has some funny stories about uh, afters with some of the Blacks old boys on Saturday that made me laugh. I heard him from Coach Adam. Glad you're doing stuff, Mitch. Thank you. And uh, thanks to Rick Dude Jr. for stepping up as treasurer and to our whole board of directors. you got a very involved group of board of directors um, that, that really works hard to give the players and coaches uh, what they what they need to succeed. Our sponsors this year, 512 Solar with JP Novak. You know, uh, again, uh, our D2 side was sporting their 512 Solar jerseys very proudly. 
uh, this week in Stump and the Blacks and uh, last week in Stump and the Reds. Call JP if you want solar for your house. He does a great job and he sponsors the hell out of the Huns. Austin Beer Works, Baylor Scott and White and the Mary Company, Harold Hoffman Realtor. If you're going to buy or sell a house, I hope you go to Harold. He gives a lot of time back to the board of directors, to Huns Youth Rugby, and he's also a financial sponsor of Huns Youth Rugby. Uh, in closing, before I close, I just want to say there's a new Huns history video up with Terry Adams, world famous prop. He and Jay Rudd anchored our front row for the better part of a couple of decades. Uh, he was on that national champion uh, contender team in D2 that went to Westerns in the early 90s. Uh, there's 20 Huns history videos up now with something like 10,000 views, uh, hours of bullshit from the old boys and interesting history too. Uh, go give it a look sometime, you young cats, if you want to learn more about Huns history. You know, fellas, I was really emotional uh, after the Blacks win. You know, uh, beating the Blacks is special. Um, I got involved uh, a few years ago because a couple of guys that had been leading our club kind of got divorced and left and we were having to start over and I didn't want to see our club fold um, or, or take a step backward. A lot of guys stepped up and I've mentioned a ton of them today. Um, so I've been able to play a small part in that. And I just had a lot of pride to see all the effort of all these guys on and off the field pay off in real time so quickly. And to have you guys just make the most of it and kick ass means so much to me and to all the old boys. You know, they're talking about this in email streams, how fast you are, how talented you are, how great you're doing, how proud they are that you're wearing the white, black, and blue stripes. Hans!